Hey guys, what is going on? It's your boy, the Mad Tiger here. And up here today, guys, we are back with another recommendation game video. You guys seem to enjoy the PlayStation 1 game recommendation and just in general, the recommendation videos. And uh, that's pretty good. And um, like I said, these videos aren't necessarily me telling you to go out and get these games. It's me just showing some games that are in my collection um, that either have some good memories for me and I know are good games or just some sort of obscure ones that I wanted to give a little bit of screen time and stuff like that. And uh, today, guys, we have ourselves 20 Nintendo Wii games. Yes, I'm giving the Nintendo Wii some love today. Um... The Nintendo Wii, for me personally, um, has some good memories. I remember getting one for Christmas and, you know, it was marketed as a family-based console. You know, a, a console for a lot of people with the motion controls. You know, so anyone could pick up and play the Nintendo Wii. And I don't think that's such a bad thing, to be honest. You know, a lot of people who often ask me, you know, I'm, I want to get a system that everyone in my family can enjoy. You know, Nintendo Wii is normally what I would recommend, and like I said, it's also a backwards compatible console, so you can play your GameCube games on there if you have the first model. I'm lucky because I have a modded Wii that um, not only has all of the GameCube games on, but a bunch of Wii Game Boy Advance and WiiWare titles. WiiWare was essentially like the digital games that came out on the Wii, and they're really, um, you can't really buy them anymore, so... Um, but the Nintendo Wii sort of come to its end now. It's still got some games being released for it, normally just dance. But the Nintendo Wii had a good legacy, uh, but it had some bad things about it. You know, it just wasn't a powerful system compared to some the other systems at the time. Necessarily not that, uh, sorry, not necessarily um, is such an issue for me. A console is a console, but it's not about the console, it's about the games. And that's why people, I, I don't get into console wars. Um, I think every console has some good and bad things about it. But to be honest, it's normally, if the games are good, then it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> but I definitely think the Nintendo Wii had its fair share of terrible shovelware games, uh, being a you know a system that was marketed towards families and young kids and older people. You know, anyone can go. Oh look, here's another party game we can all play. And you know, you you might enjoy them for a while, but then when you sit back and you go, this was just a piece of shit waste of space game. But the Nintendo Wii has a fair amount of good hardcore games. Now, I don't have any of the Marios, the, the, the Mario games, the Zeldas, you know, Xeno Saga. All of those games, um, Xeno Saga, not Xeno Saga, sorry, um, Xenoblade, um, I think it's called Xenoblade. Stuff like that, um, and, uh, and, you know, they're amazing games and, you know, I could have put them on this list, but they'd be on anyone's list. So I've got some ones that not necessarily, you might, uh, you might be surprised to see some in here and not necessarily these are amazing games, some of them. Some of them are just some personal favourites and uh, some obscure games like we did with the PlayStation 1. But we are starting off strong with two of my favourite games on the Nintendo Wii. House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return and House of the Dead Overkill. Now this came out on the PS3 as well, um, but I love the House of the Dead games in the arcade. You know, the arcade shooters, on-rail shooters, and there's a ton of these on-rail shooters on the Nintendo Wii. And what's great about them is you don't need to have a old TV to play with, you know, light guns. Uh, they just use the sensor bar and you can get the zapper attachment or gun attachment to give you that little bit more um, of a more arca uh, arcadey experience at home. Um, House of the Dead 2 and 3 is pretty much just what it is. It's House of the Dead 2 and 3 on one disc, but there's also some um, bonus modes and different gameplay modes. Some cool little um, upgrades and things you can get in this game. I, I had a ton of fun with this one. Love this game. Um, you know, I used to play this a lot before I went on holiday, just in case I ran into House of the Dead. So I knew what I was doing, but uh, House Dead Overkill was a game that was just built up from the ground and it's its own game. Um, it's, you know, one that can be beaten. It's quite, it's really good. I really enjoyed this game. I played it with my brother all the way through um, and you can play this with four players as well. So if you've got three other friends or family members to play it with, 
check it out. I still, this still copy hasn't even been opened yet properly. So, um, shows how much I uh, play the Wii. But this game's really good. It's probably, in my opinion, the best House of the Dead game, just because of how, you know, how much time is in that game. Um, speaking of another on-rail shooter, I have another one here, and that is Dead Space Extraction. If you're a fan of Dead Space, you know that horror game setting space. Um, really, really scary game, often considered one of the scariest games of all time. Uh, that's debatable, but uh, definitely get some, ooh, you know, some, some jumps out of that. But here's an on-rail shooter version. Now, there was another Dead Space game on the consoles that wasn't a traditional Dead Space game, but that was a puzzle game. Um, this one is an on-rail shooter, and I don't think it came out on anything else. It might be on PC. Again, really, really cool um, game. I've heard nothing but good things about this. I, I don't think I've played it myself, but I've seen gameplay and stuff. And again, it's an on-rail shooter. Two players, co-op. If you've got another friend to play it with, check it out. One that I could also mention are the Resident Evil. If I'm talking about good light gun games, you've got two Resident Evil games on there. Umbrella Chronicles and um, Dark Side Chronicles. And also Ghost Squad is another really good on-rail shooter. So those are some on-rail shooters that I love. Again, love me some on-rail shooters. Now here's one that I've heard good things about. I haven't actually played it myself. And that is Spyborg. Looking at this, you just think it's just some cheap, generic, um, you know, kids game. But I've heard this is... <coughs> I've heard this is actually a really good two-player beat-em-up style game. If you remember that um, under, um, Incredibles Rise of the Underminer game on PlayStation 2, um, you'll definitely like something like this because it's similar style game, um, upgrades and stuff like that. I haven't played it myself, but I've heard good things about it, so definitely one that I'd recommend. Again, like I said, these are sort of different games. Now... Here's sort of a cheap one, um, Excite Truck. Um, I've heard this game isn't terrible, but the game Excite Bots, which was the sequel to this, was actually considered to be one of the best racing games on the Wii. Because, you know, with the Wii, you can use the uh, steering wheel and, like, the controller like a steering wheel. And there weren't many great games that really utilised that well. But um, I, I think, it, I'm not sure about Excite Truck, but I know Excite bots was a really really good one and utilized it just as well as mario kart again you know like i said we all know the good mario games and the good zelda games but again that's not what we're talking about now here's one that i've mentioned in the psp collection before um but i often forget i have the wii version and that is mercury meltdown revolution now i've heard good things about this game um again some of these games can be played with the classic controller which is basically like a, a normal controller so you don't have to use motion controls um, and this game is basically where you play as this little like ball of mercury and it's similar say to something like marble madness or something and you can sort of change how how you know the ball you can change it into like being hot and cold in like liquid form solid form and it's sort of like a puzzle slash platformer game i've heard good things about this series have to try them out Here's another series that I've heard good things about, and that is Boom Blocks. Now, this is the second version of the game, or the third one. I, I think there was two, but there might be three. Um, and this is considered to be one of the better um, party games. And it's basically like a mix between something like, say, Jenga and Angry Birds. So, you know, you throw things at the screen and they explode. Um, I, I haven't played it myself, but this game is actually um, made from EA and Steven Spielberg. I don't know why Steven Spielberg worked on a video game, um, let alone one like this. But I wanted to put that one out there. I've heard good things about Boom Blocks. Um, if you're a fan of disaster movies and disaster themed games, check out Disaster Day of Crisis. Now, I believe this is actually a sequel or part of the same sort of universe as this SOS Final Escape game. And uh, there was another one, um, another one out of there. I, I forgot what it's called, Disaster Report or something. And this game is basically like a, a horror game almost. 
where you basically, well, it's not really a horror, but it's a game based on a disaster, and you go around, um, and it's like an adventure game, you have to, you know, save people's lives and stuff. I haven't personally played it, but this is really cheap, and that's another thing, all of these games are so cheap, you'll be able to get pretty much, you could probably get all of these games that I've shown for less than £40, which isn't bad at all. Uh, game often has three for two on their Wii stuff, so check them out. Uh, now, if you're a fan of horror games, definitely check out the Silent Hill series. It's a really, really good series. Now, here's one that came out on the Wii, but it was also, I believe, on PSP and the PlayStation 2. And the PlayStation 2 version is really hard to find. I've never seen it in person, um, but I've, I, I know it exists. Um... And I've heard uh, good things about this game. I don't know if it would be considered to be one of the best um, Silent Hill games, but I, it's definitely one that a lot of people overlook because, you know, most people think, oh, Silent Hill on the Wii, really, you know, is that worth it? But there were some good... There were some good um, horror games on the Wii. There was also a grudge game, which I want to check out myself. Now we get onto some good first person shooters. Now I know a lot of people are thinking the Wii probably wouldn't be an amazing first person shooter, but when you think about it, if you can control where your gun's aiming and stuff, it's pretty innovative. Now one of the first games that came out on the Wii was Red Steel. However, I remember playing it and I didn't think it was terrible, but again, a lot of people have said how bad of a game it really was. Now the second game, however, actually, pretty much fixed all of that because you could use, you would have to use a Wii Motion Plus for this game. So if you don't have a Wii Motion Plus, you cannot play this game. I just recommend getting a Wii Motion Plus controller, um, one with that, it built in. I think I have a Wii Motion Plus somewhere, I'm not sure. Um, but again, this game pretty much fixed all of the issues and made the uh, sort of, the sword combat in this game apparently is very good. Now here's another first person shooter I've heard good things about and that is The Conduit. Um, this is sort of like a, almost like um, a, a sci-fi themed um, game. And it's definitely, I've heard it's considered to be one of the better first person shooters on the Wii. Again. Um, you can use Wii Speak. I've never heard of Wii Speak. I, I'm assuming it's like a microphone you can talk into. Um, but I've heard good things about this game, and there's also a second one which apparently is just as good. Now, here's some. Now, we're getting into some games here now. Um, most of the games here are, are either just average games or something that I wanted to. There's something about them that I wanted to say. Um, if you're a fan of Smash Brothers, check out Cartoon Network Explosion. Um, I think it's called, ex yeah, it's Punch Time Explosion. Um, this is basically like a Smash Bros style game with Cartoon Network characters. You know, Samurai Jack, Captain Planet, Powerpuff Girls, Johnny Bravo, Ben 10. Um, I don't know how good of a game this is. I think I've played it. And I thought it was quite an average game, but it's definitely one worth checking out if you're a fan of Cartoon Network. And um, this was sort of like the, this is sort of more, like, this is definitely more of the older Cartoon Network, but there's some, you know, newer ones in there, like uh, Ben 10, for example. But definitely one worth checking out if you're a fan of Cartoon Network. Now, this is, I know a lot of people might hate me for this, but this is actually one of my favourite Wii games. Raven Rabbids <coughs> TV Party. Most of the Raven Rabbids games are really fun party games, um, but Raven Rabbids TV Party, I don't know what it is about this game. It's just such a fun game. There's over 50 mini games in this game. You can use the uh, Wii Fit Board as well if you want. I don't know why I love playing this game with my brothers. And it's a really, really fun game. It's a great party game, one worth checking out. And it's, it's funny, it's humorous. Yeah, it's quite childish, but... Um, Rayman Raven Rabbids games were pretty fun. And they're still going to this day, the Raven Rabbids, but they've sort of gone off on this weird tangent, you know, with the, um, the one that came out on the Switch, which was the uh, XCOM-style game, which I've heard is a good game. 
But I don't know, man. Just seeing Raven Rabbids in a different sort of universe. They're just trying to make it to Nintendo. Here's another one that's pretty cool, um, and that is Drawn to Life. Now, this game was on the DS as well, um, but essentially it's like a platform, puzzle platform game, and you basically draw things in the game. Um, and, and, and I think that's pretty cool. It's quite a creative little game there. Definitely one worth checking out if you're a fan of these sort of creative style games where you have to use, um, you know, your own mind or something like that. Um, here's one that's an average game. It's just an average racing game. However, I wanted to show it because this game is made by Bethesda. Yeah, yeah, Bethesda made a racing game on the Wii. Um, and you can even use GameCube controller on this. I played it before with my brothers. You can even play up to eight, um, seven, seven people on the screen. Fucking hell. Um, I played it a little bit and I thought it was meh. Um, it seems like a game that could have come out on, like, the PlayStation 1 or something. Um, but, I don't know. Wheel spin. Bethesda, yeah. Now, I don't talk about sports games a lot on my channel, but one game that definitely comes up in terms of sports games on the Wii is the golf game. Now, there's quite a few different golf games on the Wii as well as sports games, but, um, you know, Wii Sport, was, everyone played Wii Sport back in the day, you know, everyone tried it out. And I think if you're a fan of, you know, playing a sports game, but you don't want to sit there and just play with a normal controller, you actually want to feel like you're playing the sport. Um, I've heard the golf games, especially the Tiger Woods games on the game, uh, the Wii, I don't know how many there are, are, are actually um, basically really good golf games. I, I don't know so much about golf games. I haven't played, played a golf game in a long time. I have to try one. Here's another one, and um, that is Soul Calibur Legend. Now, this isn't a one-on-one -on -one fighting game like Soul Calibur. It's actually more of a hack and slash game, um, almost similar to, say, Dynasty Warriors or something like that, which is really weird to see because you remember how I said Dynasty Warriors 1 was a fighting game like Soul Calibur, and then they changed it to a hack and slash game? Well, Soul Calibur pretty much copied Dynasty Warriors almost. I think that's what that game is. Yes, wait. Um, now, here's one that I often hear come up quite a lot. If you're a fan of Atlas titles, you know, um, heavy text-based and um, RPG-style games, check out the Trauma Center games. There's, I think there's three or four on the Wii. And these essentially are, you know, basically like a an adventure graphic novel mixed with a um, hospital game where you basically have to perform surgery and things on people. I've heard these games are actually really good games. Now we get to two really obscure games that um first of all we have Endless Ocean. Um, this is a basically more of an experience than it is a game. It's similar to the game Abzu, where, you know, it's a, an exploration game where you go underwater and you explore. Um, I think I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's definitely one of those relaxing games. So, you know, I, I would recommend Abzu as well. And uh, it's definitely, there, there's not many games like it out there. And last but not least, is often considered the worst game on the Wii. Ninja Bread Man. Um, <clears throat> I've heard this game is just absolutely terrible. It was also on the PS2, and I do want to get the PS2 version. Um, it's just a really, really bad platformer action beat em up style game. And yeah, it's definitely out there. Um, the Popcorn Arcade game, if you see this word on it, um, don't check them out, they're terrible games, but yeah, um, so there we have it, 20 Wii games, I thought I'd show you off some Wii games to talk about today, and, uh, yeah, not too bad, actually, not too shabby at all, uh, the Wii does deserve some more love, um, I don't pick up many Wii games that much now, um, uh, maybe I will get some Wii games in the future, same with Wii U stuff, I haven't got a Nintendo Switch, but I think the Wii, out of the Wii, Wii U and Nintendo Switch, um, the Wii definitely has the most for me. Well, I ain't got no memories for the Nintendo Switch. Um, but I think, you know, the Wii and then Wii U, even though they weren't necessarily as good as an Xbox 360 and, you know, the Xbox One and PS4, PS3, 
you know, they tried and, you know, a lot of people enjoyed the system because of how innovative it was. And, you know, there are lots of great games that I'm not mentioning out there. You know, there's some good RPGs out there, you know, action games, shooters, you know, arcade games. There's so many Wii games. I think the Wii deserves a little bit of love today, so I thought I'd give it some love. And you guys seem to like these recommendation videos. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to leave a like. And, of course, comment below. Let me know what fa what's your favourite Wii game. And what look, do you have any good memories of the Wii or just, just think it was a waste of time? I personally think the Wii was a great system for its time. And, uh, yeah, nonetheless... Uh, that's pretty much it. And of course, guys, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and join the family. And of course, check out all the social media links in the links below. I can't be asked to say what they are. You'll see it. And of course, guys, have a nice day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.